All right. What is up, traders? What's up, tycoons? Super excited for today's video. So much to talk about. We're going to break down mortgage rates. Um, we're going to take a look at how the UAW strike has affected some parts of the economy. We'll also take a look at wage growth for job chambers, uh, WTI crude oil prices. We've got to break that down. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the charts here as well for crude oil. Uh, then we'll talk about central banks and gold. So we are going to break down some gold here. All right. And of course, we've got to talk about bonds. We need to highlight what's been happening in the move index, which is basically the bond VIX, as well as uh, this, you know, basically flashing signal uh, in TLT. All right. And then we'll take a look at TLT on the daily time frame, as well as the TNX, the 10 year treasury yield. This is the most commonly looked at one. And it's following the analysis pretty well here. Uh, so we're going to break down, you know, what to expect from that. All right. We're also going to talk about the level of excessive pessimism that we reached uh, recently in the market um, and, you know, basically go over some different highlights for you to visualize that so you guys can understand um, that in a few different ways. And then we're going to talk about the trade of the year. OK, so um, I'm going to break down what that trade of the year is for you guys. Now, as always, the content provided on this channel is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to be relied upon as legal, financial, or investment advice. So please be sure to read through the full disclaimer. All right. And if you're not familiar with the channel, I did actually start a completely free newsletter for you guys. It's called Investment Intelligence. Uh, there's a link in the description as well as the comment section. You guys can sign up for that. It's completely free, giving out free, valuable finance content, as well as I like to sprinkle in some free trade ideas. Uh, so this is one on Tesla over a month ago. Right, highlighting the conditions we are looking for. Uh, and you can see that those conditions played out very nicely and it was a very nice, profitable trade. Uh, there was another one, right? Not all the trades are long ideas. Some of them are short ideas, right? So we have SWK here, Stanley Black & Decker, highlighting the rising wedge, uh, going over where we we're targeting the share price to hit. And it played out exactly perfectly. So sign up for that if you guys are fans of free, valuable content and free trade ideas straight to your inbox. The link is in the description. Let's get into the video now. So the NBA mortgage purchase index fell to its lowest since 1995 as mortgage rates rose to 7.53%. And mortgage rates have since gone higher. Uh, I haven't taken a look at them recently since treasury yields have started to pull back. It might have dropped a little bit, but they were very close to 9%. And the UAW strike is actually having a massive impact on tr trucking volumes. I haven't seen this big of a drop in trucking contract volumes outside of a holiday since the start of COVID. Contracted load volumes are down over 12%, right? And that's what we're looking at here, all right, um, is we see this massive, massive dip in here. And again, this is something that I haven't seen in a very, very long time. Um, wage growth for job changers, this tumbled to 9% uh, from 9.7%, the lowest since June 2021, and down from a peak all right, of 16%, 16.4% last June. And so what we were seeing was we were seeing this time period here where um, basically if you were a job changer, which is going to be the blue line, it, it made more sense for you and you were making more money to be a job changer and change jobs, okay, than to actually stay in your job, right? And now the job stairs has started to decline a little bit since September of 2022, um, but the uh, peak, all right, in the job changers was actually last June, all right, in June of 2022, and it's seen a significant decline, all right, compared to the job stayers, you know, peaking here in September, right around 7.9%, going back down to 5.9 versus the 16.4% in the job changers coming all the way down to 9 now, WTI crude prices saw their largest drop since September of 2022. Um, and of course, the whole Israeli-Palestine, you know, uh, Gaza situation has caused a sudden spike in uh, energy prices and oil prices. We'll have to see if that's going to sustain. Um, you know, this is there's a lot of catalysts happening, um, you know, on, on a global perspective. But this was a buy signal. OK, this was a buy signal here. And, um, you know, it just so happened that right after we got this buy signal, we also ended up getting that uh, bullish catalyst for energy prices. But here's the thing that I'm looking at on energy prices is I'm wondering if they actually peaked. OK, um, now and that's more of a shorter term. We'll have to see how it develops. But what I mean by that, if we take a look, we had this clear downtrend here, and it seems to me we got a textbook look above and fail, right? This was the time for buyers to step in and really show that they're in control and going to continue pushing energy prices higher. A lot of people were talking about getting to that $100 a barrel price level. 
and you're seeing crude oil at $100, uh, but we we did not get there, okay? Now, it's still, um, you know, put in a nice bottom here, right? So, you know, from a simple TA perspective, old resistance right here becomes new support here, and then new support here, and we bottomed in both of these areas here. OK, um, but we were looking for strength in energy. We we're looking for strength in the crude oil futures. Now, that's a weekly time frame. If we zoom down to a lower time frame, such as the daily, um, you know, the, the signs of a potential look above and fail become even clearer. Right. So we had the breakout. OK, and, you know, we're supposed to retest right here and look at what we did. We came back down into our major zone and then we actually rejected that same trend line three days here in a row, three days on the daily candle. We rejected that trend line and we're heading lower. Now, there was a gap down to fill from the initial overreaction of the um, you know, news in Israel. We've since filled that gap, and it'll be very interesting to see if we uh, continue to raise higher. Okay, If we can get back above this trend line and get back above $90, then um, you know, crude oil is going to be looking bullish. But you know, if we continue to consolidate in this range, that was uh, old supply here, old supply here, old supply here. It's an old supply zone that we finally broke out from. If it does not turn into a demand zone and there's not an imbalance of buyers and demand pushing price higher, it's very possible that um, you know we start to see these oil prices drop. Okay, so that's something that I'm monitoring for now. Um, and, you know, this is a good time to have patience, guys. Okay, you don't always have to feel like you need to call the next move, call the next top, call the next bottom. Okay, you can wait for signs. Okay, you don't have to rush into things. Um, you know, if you tried going long here on the break and retest, that was a very, you know, uh, textbook um, type of play, right? And not every play is going to work. Not every strategy is going to work all the time. And so you take your loss and now you reevaluate things. Okay, and you could have entered short at the retest of that trend line and that play was working, uh, but we'll have to see if that play is going to continue working or if we actually get back above there and get back above 90. All right. Now, central banks added 77 tons to their gold reserves in August, the third consecutive month. This is a 38 percent uptick from July and suggests that we may have now moved past the net selling we saw in April and May. So if we take a look at the gold futures, uh, you know, gold is another thing that was impacted by uh, the whole uh, Israel situation. It was a positive catalyst for that. We have this level here bearish below on the gold futures, which was 1877. Um, and, you know, when I said bearish below, I've explained what we're looking for is we're looking for a break retest and flip that to resistance. OK, this right here could just be a massive liquidity grab where they're stopping out lots of people because they know this is an important level here. And so they stop out a lot of people, all right, trying to gain that liquidity that they want. And then, of course, we have the bullish catalyst for gold um, from that Israel situation. We can see the daily MACD is starting to curl up over here. And if you zoom out and take a look in the past, I highlighted it last time I talked, I did a gold video. Uh, we had a buy signal. OK, so each time that the gold futures have been oversold on the daily time frame, um, you know, it's been a pretty good buy signal. And, you know, we recently got that again. Um, you know, so, so to me, you know, that was a clear sign to potentially go long on gold. Okay. Um, but the reason I didn't go long on gold at the time, because it was right around here that we were talking about it was because of the GLD chart, right? And what I mean by that is GLD had this gap down that it really needed to fill, uh, which was right around 170, 171. And we ended up coming here and filling that gap. So I didn't want to enter long here just because we are so close to filling that gap. And since then, we filled that gap OK, you can see the daily MACD is also crossing over here for GLD. Uh, but, uh, you know, again, something that I'm a little bit worried about is going to be the gap down. Now, there's multiple gaps up to fill. OK, and the market could go bullish and try to fill those gaps. But I want to be cautious of this gap down right here. And if gold is another thing that I'm going to be just patient on and waiting on. And if I miss the trade, I miss the trade. There's plenty of trade opportunities in the market. And I want you guys to keep that in mind. OK. You know, if you miss the initial move, you have to think about your risk to reward ratio uh, and you have to have your trade plan into things. That way, if things don't go as planned or the moment you buy, everything starts to sell off. You don't just continue holding and trying to catch a falling knife. All right. That's that's something you want to consider, um, you know, from uh, an analysis standpoint. This does seem to be our ABC correction that we're looking for after getting the five wave move up. And so it would make a lot of sense. My overall thesis is that gold is going to break out. 
um, and you know get above uh, its previous highs here. But there's a lot of work to be done for that in the meantime. And if that's actually going to be the case, there's plenty of time to get in the long trade versus trying to force things now just because like you feel like you missed the opportunity due to the whole Israel-Palestine situation. Now, again, that's a bullish catalyst so far for energy, a uh, bullish catalyst for things like gold. We'll have to see how that maintains in the future. All right. If we talk about bonds, the move index is uh, what recently went back to a rare field air, more than one standard deviation about its long term average, which is, you know, basically going to be the shaded area here. Uh, and so you can take this as a sign that, again, the bond market is under a lot of stress. So, you know, you, you can see the bank failures right here, how high they went up. And then uh, last week, this is where the move index went up to on October 3rd. And since then, we've seen a nice little rebound, um, you know, in the bond market. And again, that's also largely due to the Israeli-Palestine situation. OK, but, you know, not just those catalysts uh, aren't the only things moving up. Right. We talked about um, gold. OK. And then we also talked about, um, uh, you know, energy prices. All right. A lot of those things also had technical analysis behind them. Right. You know, when we look at energy. Right. It came down to a major demand zone. OK, we saw that it sold off the most it's sold off uh, in a very long time since September of 2022. These are buy signals. Right. So we're seeing lots of buy signals, um, you know, from from market breadth or, or technical analysis in uh, in oil, in gold. OK, and we're also seeing the same thing in in bonds. Right. When you take a look at the move index, um, of course, the moon, the move being the, the VIX of the bond market, when it's at extremely elevated levels, this is a time when you potentially want to go long. Uh, in every case back to 2003, when long dated treasuries lost as much as they just have, they went on to stabilize and even rally over the next 100 days. And so that's what we're seeing here. We're seeing another signal potentially to buy into TLT. And these were all signals that came out before the whole Israel situation. All right. Um, you know, we haven't seen TLT basically at these levels. We've only seen it a few times. Right. We've seen it back in 09 uh, in 2011. All right. In 2013, uh, 2015, 2017, 2021. Then we had 2022 and we're back at those levels again. So, you know, over the past two decades, it's a signal that we we've only seen, um, you know, a handful or two times in the market, especially in the bond market. And, we're, you know, as a result, we're seeing a pretty nice rebound here in TLT. Now, we talked about TLT from a technical standpoint as well, also being ready for a bounce. OK, now, ultimately, I do think it's possible that TLT heads lower. That's what the initial initial technical analysis was projecting, um, you know, TLT heading back down to the 80 to 82 dollar region. And we've been waiting for this wave four bounce up. OK, so, um, you know, again, we're seeing lots of signs in oil and gold and also in the bond market that, you know, we were due for a rally from a lot of technical perspectives. And then we now have a catalyst behind this fueling it. OK, and it's very possible that the massive amount of shorts that we have in treasuries continue to uh, close those positions and in a sense get squeezed out. Now, they may not we may not necessarily see a short squeeze. We, we may just be seeing a whole bunch of shorts covering right now. OK, there is a little bit of a difference between those. Um, and, you know, I just want to kind of make that clear. But, um, you know, there's no guarantee that TLT is going to come up and fill these gaps, right? There's a gap right around $90 that we're targeting here. And then there's also a gap right around $93 that we're targeting here. Um, you know, I think it's possible TLT can extend up to those areas for wave four. Um, but, you know, there's very strong resistance here at 89.21. So we're going to have to get above 89.21 first. If we stay below there, ultimately, I'm going to be bearish on the TLT for now. And, um, you know, we're going to see how things turn out. Now, <clears throat> the environment is literally changing right before our eyes. Um, you know, it's very possible that the Fed may pause and start cutting rates sooner because of the whole Israel-Palestine situation. OK, that's that's also affected the bond market and also affected the Fed rate hike projections. Um, you know, so things are changing right before our eyes and you don't want to jump the gun too early. You don't want to go aggressively short here because you think it's a dead cat pounce and you don't want to go too aggressively wrong because what if this really is just shorts covering and then now they're looking to get back in at better prices and reshort treasuries again. Um, you know, all of the analysis is lining up here so far and oftentimes price action precedes news. 
Okay. It's just weird how that works out. But, you know, um, we, we, we topped out here at TNX on our price targets, right? We had a range of price targets that we were looking for. We can't predict necessarily where the top is going to be, but we have some key levels and you can see it respected that level very well here at 4.894. Um, and now we're looking for an ABC correction to the downside. Okay, so if TNX is going down and we're looking for TNX to go down, um, you know, then that's going to result in TLT bouncing. So we're looking for the wave four bounce in TLT, and we'd be looking for something like this, where it's going uh, in an ABC as well, ABC, something like this. And then in TNX, we're also looking for basically, um, you know, the same thing here, but to the inverse, right? So now we're looking for an ABC to the downside. We already filled the first gap, right? In the in the last video I mentioned, um, you know, we had the gap right here to fill, okay? That's highlighted by the uh, yellow arrow. And we have another gap down right here on TNX to fill as well. Um, and ultimately, I think that would be our larger sequence wave four pullback if we do end up filling the gap down here uh, and, and ultimately head back up again, which is why I think TLT has the possibility of heading down to that $82, $85 region. Um, you know, just by strictly following the analysis, um, you know, if things continue to change in the market, we will have to reevaluate. But look at the gap up. OK, there is a gap up right here on the TNX to fill. If you take a look right here. There's a nice little gap to fill, okay? And that's going to put the TNX back above 4.715. Um, you know, so we'll have to, you know, just keep an eye on things right now, uh, monitor how things progress in the market. Um, when we talk about stocks, we saw recently, um, you know, the level of excessive pessimism is now below what was registered at the December 2022 and March 2023 lows, okay? And that's what we're seeing here, excessive pessimism, um, you know, reaching below those levels. And so now, um, you know, since these levels have hit and since this has happened, we've actually seen a rebound in the stocks, right? And we've seen a pretty, um, you know, significant bounce in the stock market so far, um, you know, and, and, and this was basically, you know, another buy indicator right here. Now, this is something that could be justifying the rallies, even though the news we're getting, right, is because we've been so oversold, um, you know, PPI came in a little bit hot, CPI came in a little bit hot, the NFP report came in and really hot and then uh not even hot but it just came in strong right which is good for the economy um but you know from a fed rate hike perspective um that's you know a lot of people are going to say that's hawkish um you know and and we're seeing these rebounds you know even though we have all of these um things that should be negative catalysts uh even the israel war you know we gap down and then we we shoot right back up and have a green day there um, you know, these are some of the reasons why we're seeing this wild price action that we're seeing, um, as well as this here. OK, SPY has made lower lows on 33 of the last 50 trading days. That's tied for the most in the ETFs history. Now, since then, it's done that. Uh, but look at the SPY right here. Right. We talk about these ABC corrections, um, you know, look A down, B up, C down. Right. And we bounced right over here, right around the 200 day moving average. So very clean from a technical analysis standpoint. And, um, you know, a lot of these things are making sense from a technical perspective. And, you know, sometimes, you know, the news is is going to trick people. Right. And and the news is going to make people go long or make people go short based on uh, what they think the news should do to the market. But oftentimes the news doesn't have to do what we think or what it should do uh, in the market. Right. And, um, you know, so th that's now two catalysts. Basically, we've seen uh, for buyers to step in. Um, you know, being that we saw the most lower lows, the tied for the most lower lows in the in this SPY ETFs history, and then also the extreme levels of pessimism in the market. And then here, um, for the first time since early October of last year, not a single sector ETF was trading above its 50 day moving average, which is also insane. Right. And this is also a sign that things are oversold in the market. And, um, you know, you, you combine these three things together and you start to look at these and you say, well, maybe it's time to be a contrarian, right? Maybe things are getting a little bit too oversold and maybe it's time for me to start looking at some long positions. And this is why we've been seeing the market rebound um, pretty strongly here recently you know, up about three to 4% from the lows uh, in, in recent days. Now, this has been the trade of the year. Uh, we're going to break down, you know, the trade of the year before we actually look at the performance. But U.S. earnings expectations have risen steadily for the NASDAQ 100, dominated by mega cap tech groups, even as they have plummeted for the small caps in the Russell 2000. So we're looking at the earnings expectations for 
the NASDAQ 100 here on the right, and you can see that steadily uh, inclining. And then the Russell 2000, the IWM is going down. So the trade of the year has been long big tech and short IWM. $100 in the Magnificent 7 versus the Russell 2000 has grown to $187 this year, meaning that you're long the Magnificent 7 and short the Russell 2000. That's an 87% gain. And that is um, a much more significant gain than if you were just holding the S&P 500, if you were just holding the, uh, you know, NASDAQ ETF, the QQQs, um, you know, it's not as impressive if you were only holding NVIDIA, okay, but um, there's not really anybody out there with a sensible mind who's just, you know, full port into NVIDIA, right? So, you know, from an ETF, uh, you know, strategy perspective, uh, this has pretty much been the trade of the year is going along the Magnificent 7 and shorting the Russell 2000. Um, and, you know, this is kind of like basically having a hedge also, right? So you are long the market. Um, and you're long the top seven companies, you know, arguably in the in the stock market. And then you're short, um, you know, the Russell 2000, which is small caps and small caps are getting destroyed right now for a very obvious reason. If you haven't figured it out, it's because of interest rates. Right. The Russell 2000. These are smaller cap companies. These companies don't have billions of dollars on their balance sheets that they can put into short term T-bills like the Magnificent Seven can. OK, the Magnificent Seven took out massive amounts of debt, issued lots of bonds, um, you know, borrowed a lot of money during COVID when there was free money everywhere. And now they can put that free money to work and actually get a high yield return on the cash that they have. So that's really the big difference between the small caps and the Magnificent Seven is the small caps don't have that money. They don't have that cushion. It's hard for them to get funding right now. Um, and, you know, a lot of them are having to potentially rebalance and, and, and refinance um, some of their debt. And they're having to do so at higher interest rates. And they don't necessarily have the cash on hand to go in and uh, be able to yield farm in a sense um, like the Magnificent Seven can do. Now, if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. There's also a link in the description for the Ko-Fi. OK, so Ko-Fi is a platform that I started here, uh, started using. And uh, what it allows me to do is uh, basically book our one on one sessions now directly through Ko-Fi. So, um, you know, you can come in here, you can request a specific YouTube video. Um, you know, if you want me to make a YouTube video on the topic of your choice, you just come on here to commissions, click on that. And that's also where you can come in here and uh, book uh, our one-on-one -on -one sessions. I do 30 minute sessions. I do one hour sessions. I do those every single week. And, um, you know, if you feel like you need a little bit of one-on-one -on -one time, um, you know, maybe to ask some questions or try to figure out some of the different strategies or maybe what's, um, you know, why some strategies aren't working for you and what you're doing wrong then I'll be happy to, uh, you know, do those sessions with you. Uh, and you can use the Ko-Fi platform to do that. And if you ever enjoy the free valuable content I do put out, you can come on here and you can click on the buy a coffee button. And it's basically a way to live a uh, tip, uh, live, leave a tip or a donation uh, for the free valuable content I do put out for you guys. Thank you guys again for watching. Sign up for the newsletter. Check out the Ko-Fi page. Links are in the description. And with that being said, I'm out.